On this episode of Street Rat Garage, we trade our perfectly good running chop truck for this 1980s Dodge that doesn't run and has rusty floors and has been sitting for 20 years and yeah. Okay, so I bet you are wondering why we would trade a perfectly good running truck that we spent a bunch of time and effort to get to run and drive for something that uh, something that doesn't run, it doesn't drive. It's been sitting for many years and has nuts in the hood apparently from all that noise. It's because of this right here. This truck has a 440 in it. It did not come with a 440. If you look at the tag right here, it says it came with a 5.2, so uh, 318 in this originally. But now it has a 440 in it. It even has headers, apparently, Headman headers. As the story goes, this truck originally had, like I said, the 318 in it. The gentleman that bought this was a camper puller and uh, apparently it lacked the power to go up large hills pulling a big camper. Go figure, on a 318. So, swap in a big 440 back in the days when uh, gasoline was no big deal. And at first glance, it looks like it was a pretty good swap. Uh, I mean, he has his AC all hooked up uh, nice and the condenser and he has a little tow uh, or a transmission. Can you see it? The transmission uh, cooler in there. And then it's pretty much the same old story. The truck got parked, it sat. The gentleman unfortunately passed away. It went to the estate and they got sold off super cheap and then uh, I traded for my shop truck, which ran beautifully. But what am I going to do with a perfectly good running vehicle? This is what you come to see. Let's get this thing back out, back on the road, and maybe we can trade it for something else that doesn't run. Okay, let's get in here and have a look and see what we need today. Uh, well, like I said before, we need spark plug wires because these are apparently incredibly delicious and they have been eaten. So uh, yeah, we need spark plug wires. We should just get spark plugs. Let's just get spark plugs too. I'm a little bit worried about some of these uh, control boxes here because there's some leaking there. There's also some leaking there and um, yeah, they shouldn't do that. So, and I, <laughs> I have a diagram here apparently, but I'm not sure exactly what those go to or what they do, but pretty sure that they are important. So, okay, ready? One, two, three. Oh, nothing jumped out. Good. There's no air filter in there. Okay. Yep. Hey, look, a Holly carburetor. Nice. Mm. The line's still hooked up. What's this vacuum line that's open? Does this, where's that go? It doesn't go to the brake booster, but we'll have to see if that draw, no, that's just a vent. That goes right into the, the bowl. That's a, that's an old carburetor. Okay, so it's a, maybe, a, maybe a 600. It's a little stiff. And being a Holly, it's gonna be all gunked up inside, so that's probably gonna give us a problem. But we have, we have Hollies. Well, everything's not hooked up. Uh-oh. We have, I didn't see that before. I think I spoke too soon on, uh, you know, all the wiring either not done right or somebody's been in here. What was that? I don't know what that is. Do not know what that is and where it goes. This could be a little bit bigger issue than I thought. But look, we have, we have a coil. So that means we have uh, points, so. How hard can that be? Maybe we can just bypass all this junk. Is there a ballast resistor? Do you see a ballast resistor? Ballast resistor. Uh, yeah, there's a ballast resistor right there and it's not hooked up. Oh wait, there's more. Here's a ballast resistor. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm starting to take back what I said about this swap being done good, but maybe all that came later. Okay, let's let, let's get out of the engine compartment because 
it's starting to get depressing. Let's look at the body. The body, not so bad. It's solid on the fenders, solid there. We have, we used to have running boards. Those are gone. What do we have on doors? Solid doors. Oh yeah, solid doors, solid rockers, uh, holes on the floor. So there's that. A little bit of hole right there. Rockers, fair. And the bed is solid. It's up for here on this side. This is a, it's a prospector. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> Apparently just a trim level. I mean, it's already called a Dodge Ram. So it's a Dodge Ram. Oh, the emblem's missing on this side, but it said Prospector right there. Dodge Ram and the 150, right? Let's go back over here. There was an emblem over here. It's a Dodge Ram 150 Royal SE Prospector. They were, they were really naming stuff, weren't they? Dodge Ram 150 Royal SE Prospector. That's what this is. No idea what any of that means, besides it's a half ton truck. So it has a Prospector package on it. Did it come with those rims? I don't know. But those are uh, turbine style rims. Oh, they, I don't know, they may be original. There was a center cap here. Um, anybody knows if these are original to a Dodge because I'm not a Dodge guy comment below look at the tire I don't even I don't even want to poke that I mean that's look at that. that that's not good we're gonna have problems with that going down the street a little bit of rust on the bed this is all solid that rocker's solid there's a little bit of rust in that fender well and then there's a lot of rust right there plus a little bit of a ding so but at least we got some sweet sweet patina right here and the entire hood and the roof and the doors and there's a lot of patina on the track we should bring that out you know later now let's have a look on the inside of the truck where we got the uh, ultra modern 1980s disco I guess that'd be after disco, but we got the uh, MC Hammer, Can't Touch This, LL Cool J car stereo with the equalizer and the cassette deck, which uh, must be part of the Prospector package because that's mighty fancy stereo for back in that day or part of the Royal SE package. It's got the ugliest steering wheel on it though. I mean, this is this looks like what you would see in a a Dodge Omni, Plymouth Horizon. Pretty sure that's pretty close to the same steering wheel. That, that's hideous. 38,000 miles. Craigslist uh, actual miles. If we come down here to the pedal, we can tell, yeah, that is definitely not 38,000 actual miles. No way. That's, uh, that would be an incredibly rough 38,000. So. We'll call it 138,000 because the dashboard's not all beat up. The door panel isn't too bad. About 138, I'll give it that. So, yeah, that's pretty much uh, it in a nutshell on the inside. There's not a whole lot in here. I mean, we do have analog gauges, 85 mile an hour speedo, and a cargo light. Oh, we have trailer brakes that probably don't work. Oh, and a vacuum gauge. Why do we have a vacuum gauge? I don't know. But we have an aftermarket vacuum gauge for some reason. Yeah, and we have the, uh, oh boy, that, that is, that is not good. We have a fuse box with no fuses in it and just dangling. Hmm. Nice. Okay. But if we look on the bright side, we do have a whole bed of garbage, old carpet that's been sitting there for 150 years that we will have to do something with. So pretty much what I'm trying to say is uh, it's going to be a long day, a long, 
long, long day. Let's get started. All right, first things last, let's check the oil. Well, we have a lot of oil. I mean, like a lot of oil. We have about twice as much oil as we need. So that pretty much means there's probably something else in there besides oil. Or the truck had a uh, low oil pressure and somebody just kept adding oil to it, hoping that would fix the problem. Uh, yeah. It smells old, but it doesn't really smell gassy. Check that one more time. Yeah, it definitely has way too much oil. It's not totally black. I mean, it's still a little translucent. So there's that. I hope that was the right word to use. That was a big word. Okay. Now, while we're in here, we are going to pull this cap off and uh, look at our point system and see how it is. There's a lot of junk in here. Look at that. We have a ground wire here that is not hooked up. And where does it go? It goes, well, it goes in the other end of this, which is also not hooked up, which hopefully we don't need anyway. But we got uh, our coil seems to have power going to it. If we have a fuse, I, well, we don't have a fuse. We know that. Okay. Let's pop this off and see what we have going on inside here. Okay, let's pull this cap off real quick and look inside of here. And uh, yeah, remember what I was saying about uh, points? Yeah, we don't have that. Um, but we do have a coil. Come and look at this real quick. So it has a magnetic pickup here, which I guess is uh, powered, by, powered by the coil. So there's that. So I guess all our electronics probably are still going to come into play in this application. Well, at least we don't have to fool with, uh, with points, but I kind of, I kind of rather, because that probably would have been way easier and we could have bypassed some stuff. I mean, we can still add points. Um, if worse comes to worse and we can't get all this stuff fixed, we'll just run a ballast resistor. We'll run a set of points and, um, it'll fire one way or the other. Have you ever noticed that there are not a lot of Dodge revivals on uh, channels like this? Well, I think I'm learning. I'm learning why. It's not just uh, not just scraping the points, putting gas in it, and getting power to the starter, and it starts. This is uh, this is going to be a little more complicated. But I hope I'm wrong. Just pulled out all the spark plugs and they pretty much all look the same this is from the passenger side they're they're firing just a just a tad rich but not bad not bad at all it seems like it was running pretty good before it was shut down i'm gonna go ahead and run into town and get uh spark plugs some wires and probably a whole pack of just 20 amp fuses and just stick them all in there and see if anything catches fire. That's how we'll know. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and run into town. I'm gonna get some spark plugs. I'm gonna get some wires. I'll probably get a whole pack of 20 amp fuses. That way we can just stick a bunch of big fuses in there and if there's some bad wiring, we will know just like that because of the smoke and the fire. Just got back from O'Reilly's, got the Marvel Mystery Oil, a funnel, some spark plugs and fuses. Had to order the spark plug wires though. They'll, they'll be here in a couple hours, then we'll get those put on. But let's go ahead and pour the mystery oil in it and start rotating it around and see if we can't get it loosened up a little bit better. It can be a little tricky putting uh, the marvels in here with headers, but uh, that's why I went and got this little flexi funnel deal here makes it a lot easier it's got a, a lot of bend in it so i'm just going to go ahead and fill the rest of these cylinders up 
and then we'll start turning it around. So it's all lubed up. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in under the truck and we're gonna start cranking this sucker over with a, our big, it's like an inch and a quarter. It's a huge, huge nut on there. Okay, yeah, here we go. Now, the only problem with having a solid fan is, a uh, solid mount fan is, it wants to turn and it's gonna get in our way. Ow, just like that. But fortunately the fan is loose enough I can just scoot it back and start it over. So the Marvel Mystery oil is definitely helping so I can fill it loosening up already. So I'm just going to give this a couple revolutions, get everything oiled up real good, and then we'll put the battery in and see if she'll spin with a starter. I was able to get a couple really good turns on that engine. Two revolutions all the way around. By the second revolution, it was turning real free and I wasn't feeling any ridge, ring ridge or anything there. So very important to get them lubed up, especially when they've been sitting for 15, 20, 30 years, what have you. You don't wanna just jump in there and try cranking on it because that's a good way to break some of the rings, the ring glands, and then you're really gonna be in trouble. Okay, let's get our battery dropped in. And um, well, we have a bad battery terminal it looks like. So I just noticed this guy, and this is the other half of him. And it's actually it's a bit short, really. Maybe, yeah, it, maybe that's why it's broke. <laughs> it's really stretching the, uh, the limits of that, that terminal. Okay, well, fortunately, we do have to go back to the auto parts store anyway to pick up our spark plug wires. So we'll pick up an end for that and maybe rerun this, uh, this cable somehow so we can get a little bit more length out of it. And that, one, that one's okay, I guess. Well... Let's go get us a new terminal and put on here. And then, then we'll see if it'll crank over. So I rummaged through the pole barn and we did find another cable. This was in the Monte Carlo, so we don't need it for that project. We'll just steal it and use it for this project and get something else for it later. So battery is hooked up. Now, see if we have any power at all in the truck. Got the keys, got the batteries hooked up, and zero, nothing. 100% absolutely not a thing going on here. So I'm gonna turn a few things on here. Wipers, headlights. We'll check the connections and see if we're, we have a problem there. All the fuses are in, the ignition's on. I have the lights pulled out. The wipers on the only thing working is the trailer brake and that's uh you know probably wired separately probably doesn't even go through the fuse box only thing that works is a trailer actuator brake thing now we got a problem somewhere now upon further inspection we have lots of black taped tied together wires this one has a fusible link on it right here it's a, uh, yeah, black tape together. This one here doesn't even have tape on it and it's really corroded. Uh, this wire was broken. This is all melty and just, just a mess right here. This is a ground wire right here. This one's also melted. So this is probably, probably a, maybe a ground as well. So we have issues, looks like in mostly this area right here. So gonna go get the test light, start poking on stuff and seeing where the power is going and where it's not going. And upon further, further inspection, it may have something to do 
with this uh, this power main power feed wire that goes into the uh, the wiring harness that's still connected to the broken terminal that I did not take off and put onto this terminal. Let's just go ahead and touch it here and see if we get anything like um, headlights. Yeah, so that's a problem. I'm gonna take this off real quick, attach it to here, and we'll try again. Power wire hooked up, fuses are in. We have headlights. Now let's see if we have any starter. Oh, there it goes. It fooled me there just for a second. It didn't go right away. Must take uh, a little time for the, uh, the juice to go from the battery to the key to the starter. But it's making noises. I like. Yeah, oh yeah, we got uh, <laughs> mystery oil all over the place. So I think it's time to go get our spark plugs, put those in, get our spark plug wires, put those in. Add a little juice and see if we have any fire. Got all our spark plug wires here. And now it's time to go ahead and slap them on. Do you guys know what the firing order is for a uh, big block Dodge of 440? It's 18436572. Just like Chevy, but it's counterclockwise. Chevy is clockwise. Same thing as Chevy, only backwards. And we're done, 18436572, counterclockwise. All the spark plugs are on, all the plug wires are in. Uh, let's add a little gas uh, to the carburetor here. Maybe try to get some in the float bowls if we're lucky, not all over the place. Now is a time to see If we are going to get lucky with this and it just fires up, or if all of these electronics are messed up and we have to diagnose and look and poke and prod and replace. So it's gonna be pretty straight, simple and forward. It either goes or it doesn't. A little bit of, a little bit of throttle and cranking. And nothing. I imagine that's the smart thing to do would be to check for spark. But I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more fuel to it and uh, crank it over some more. I went ahead and hooked up the battery charger so we have plenty of juice. So let's, let's crank a little bit more, see if it fires, and then when it doesn't, we'll come check for spark. Okay, attempt number two, more fuel and go. like nothing there's no spark there's no spark and you know there's no spark but at least we're building some more oil pressure I think we're building oil pressure do we have an oil pressure gauge in here um oil yeah there we go well none of the gauges seem to work so I don't know if we're building oil pressure or not okay that just tells me we probably have uh lots and lots and lots of electrical issues well it looks like we're going to have to do some probing today um unfortunately i forgot to bring a test light with me up here but i do have some wire and i do have an old actually it's a new trailer light so all that we have to do is hook one into ground and one into a hot lead and we have a giant test light so now we probe I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to test a few of these terminals here and we will see, no, well, we're not getting power here either. There's a couple spots we're not getting power. So I'm going to unwrap a little bit of this wiring and uh, it's probably, we probably got some corrosion. We definitely have some corrosion and fix some of these connections and come back and see if we get any spark. Okay. Here is one thing that we have going on. This line right here 
was tied in, this wire was tied in from here going over to this fusible link right here. And uh, judging from the, the burnt sheathing on there, this wire fried at one point. So this is, this is basically just hollow inside here. You can, I can see how much that is burnt right there. So what they did is they just jumped it from here over to here. And uh, well, looks like something I would do. And it is something I'm going to redo. I'm gonna clean up this wire, these ends. We're gonna hook this link back in and uh, see if we have any, any fire after that. And then when we don't have any fire, we'll continue looking, but hopefully we will. Okay, I got the link spliced right back in here. Every time I touch that, this relay clicks and it is in this wiring harness here that goes all the way. Let's see, where does it go? Hold on, let's look and see where that goes. This goes in this general direction and it may, it may go to this wiring that's not hooked up to anything. So I don't know if I got a hold of the, raw, the right wiring harness or not, but we definitely have a lot of wires that are not hooked up and maybe one wire in it that, wow, that is a tangled up mess that also may or may not go into the coil. So let's crank it over, see if we have any fire. If we don't, we'll continue testing. Well, that gave us, gave us some radio. So obviously uh, we got a little, little more than we had before. So let's give this a crank and see what we have. Oop. Well, still nothing, huh? Not even trying, but we have more power than what we did before. Were we getting any, any oil pressure yet? Still don't, still don't have gauge work. Still do not have gauges that are working. Now we know that power goes through a ballast resistor and then off to the ignition system. So we should probably try testing the ballast resistor. Ah, that is hot. That is really, really insanely hot. That ballast resistor. Wow, that is hot. That could be a problem. Maybe we have a bad ground wire somewhere. Ballast resistors, I mean, they warm up, but that is, that is smoking hot, absurdly hot. I still need to test this though. So, uh, wow, that is that's so hot. Unbelievable. Did I turn the key on? I didn't turn the key on. Uh, Man, I don't, I don't know how hot a ballast resistor gets. But pretty sure it shouldn't be that hot. So, well, obviously we have power going in. You know what? I'm not sure why I'm even testing this because we, I can't quite get a, there we go. We know we have power going in and obviously, well, do we have it going out? That I can't tell because I need to get a better grip on it. Okay, I just pulled the ballast resistor out and there is a crack in the porcelain. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, but I mean, it could be, but the heating or the reduction, I guess it's reduction element, kind of like a heating element in there that lowers, lowers the voltage. It could be damaged, I guess. Um, I'm not good with ballast resistors. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reconnect to the original ballast resistor and see if it's still good. I just plugged in the hot wire and there is power going through it and out. So maybe there was another issue that replaced a ballast resistor with you know, another ballast resistor that may have went bad over all the years that are sitting. 
and the original one, maybe it's still good. So let's plug it in. We'll give it some cranks, see if it gets smoking hot as well, or see if this thing just starts up. All right, key is back on. Let's give it some cranks. Did we lose power again? Uh-oh. Oh, we lost our starter. Well, I seem to have lost uh, power to the starter, so this wire here appears to go in that general direction. I have the ignition on, so let's go ahead and put power to this and see if it cranks over. There we go. And we still don't have, still don't have anything. Okay, just real quick, we'll add just a little bit more fuel and see what's going on. But we definitely, definitely have um, a whole herd of wiring issues. Okay, one more time. Not even a, not even a sputter, so still no spark. Well, I think the next thing to do is to go to the ballast resistor. On the output side, we're gonna take and jumper this wire from the uh, opposite side of the ballast resistor over to the coil and see if that gives us power to the coil, which gives us power to the, uh, yeah, distributor, which gives us power to the spark plugs, which makes fire. All right, this is my new output from the uh, ballast resistor. We're gonna throw it over there, hope it doesn't short out on anything. Well, I got the key off. Hook it directly to the coil and see if that gives us any, any spark. Okay, we, our newest bypass wire is hooked up, going directly from the ballast resistor to the coil. And now we're going directly from the, star, the battery to the starter. <laughs> And still we have absolutely nothing still no spark so this is what we're going to do we are going to uh call it a day because it's starting to get a little bit late here we're going to research some of this let me turn this key off so things don't burn up we definitely have a lot of wiring issues and i need to study up on how this ignition system works once I do that, we're going to come back and one of two things, we're either going to just bypass all of the ignition system and just run this thing directly on some sort of points or HEI style system. So we just get fired directly to the, the, the coil and just bypass all that. Or we figure out this hideous dodge junctions and control boxes and ballast resistors. This is gonna be fun, so we will be back. So now it's a week later and about 20 degrees colder. Hopefully it warms up a little bit during the day, but we did get our HEI. That's what's in the box here. We're gonna go ahead and make life a lot easier and get rid of all this crazy Dodge weirdness. If you wanna make your life a lot easier, just go out and get you an HEI, whether it's a Chevy, Ford, or Dodge. Everything is right here. Coils right here. This is 12 volts. You don't have to have a voltage regulator. Uh, drop it in, plug 12 volts to it, fire. That's all you need. That way you can eliminate this coil. You can just yank this distributor out, shove that other one in, and get rid of a lot of this wire. Get rid of uh, the ignition control module that's over there somewhere. We're gonna, we're gonna get rid of a lot of wiring here, 
clean this thing up real good. First of all, I'm going to come in here with a vacuum, suck all this other grossness and mouseness and and tree stuff and nuts and all that other stuff. Get it out of there. I'm going to pull the distributor out, pull the coil out, look at some of this wiring, and uh, we'll get that distributor jump, jump, jumped in there. We'll get that distributor dropped in there, run a wire, and hopefully this time it fires up. I've done quite a bit of wire trimming, so eliminated a good little bit of stuff that we absolutely do not need for this project. Let me bring you in here and we'll have a look at the distributor. I just pulled the stock one out. This is our new HEI and as you can see, quite a bit of difference. So I am going to assume, because I've never done this before, that the extra length is to give clearance for the bigger HEI unit up here on top. As you can see, the bottom half of this is exactly the same length. So we just need a little bit more because the old distributor sits here and it's uh it would definitely hit the valve the valve covers or the heater hoses all that other stuff so this one ought to sit right about in this area plenty of clearance for that so let me get this stuck in here and all we should have to do is uh run our wires and power and we should be good to go i made a mark right here i don't think you can see it but there's a mark right there and which direction that our uh our rotor should go it should be pointing that way all right let's try to slide this guy in here yeah it seems to be lined up but it's uh it's really tight and i think it's touching the valve cover still i can't get her quite slid in there so i think uh I think we need a more, I think we're going to need a little more clearance. So we'll just use a dead blow and give it a few light taps. Does, does not need much at all. That ought to do it. Let's see if she'll slide right in there. The, uh, I don't think that moves. Yeah, the pump drive does not move on a, on a Chrysler like it does on a, a Chevy. So once we get that lined up, Just drop right in there. There we go, like that. I think it just popped into place there. That is really tight. And it's still rubbing a little bit on the valve cover. Now I just need to pop on the uh, new distributor cap, plug it up, then we need to find power a 12 volt source, not a eight or 10 volt source like the other system takes. And we also need to line this up properly. Come on, get on there. There we go. Okay, 12 volt source of power. Cap is all wired up, so we got our hot wire going into the distributor from the uh, 12 volt side of the ballast resistor. So we are ready to try to fire it up. I'm gonna go add a little bit of gasoline to it. We'll give it a crank and see if we finally get some results. It looks like we are ready to go. So just gonna add a touch of gas, just enough to start a small fire. And um, where was our ignition wire at? We gotta find that again. Starter wire, I mean, right here. So directly from the battery, this wire right here goes down to our starter. I have the ignition turned on, so this should crank over our starter. And uh, it puttered a little bit. Let me move a couple things out of the way. I'm gonna add just a little bit more gas. Little bit. 
There we go. Now let's uh, give it a couple of pumps. Try it again. Oh yeah, we are definitely getting spark now. Okay, our timing is off just a little bit like we knew it probably would be. Now the only problem is I can only adjust this uh, distributor one way because it's so tied against that valve cover, it's bumping. So hopefully that's the direction that we need to go in. And maybe it was not the direction we need to go in. Let's add a little bit more gas to it. it again yeah I think we went the wrong way on that one shove it all the way back I mean, we cannot we cannot go any further past that point but we, what we can do is we can take each uh, spark plug wire off individually spin it around one and then we'll have some more adjustability there but let's try this one more time here gonna have to I think advance that okay we made some adjustments took each and every spark plug wire off Whoop. just moved it around one let's put some more gas in it I'm also opening up the choke here so we can add a good little bit of gas and it doesn't get bogged down okay let's try it one more time come on Okay, that's a little, okay, that should work, that should be, that should be enough to get it fired up, um, it seems like it's uh, advanced a little bit too much, but as long as we get it started and running, uh, that's what's important. I'm going to go get the boat tank, hook it up, and get some fuel to that carburetor. It's boat tank time, so got it plumbed into the carburetor. I'm gonna let it uh, pump there. And we're just gonna go ahead and tap on it because you know the floats are stuck. Get those guys knocked down there. Hopefully that does it. Oops, I unplugged the pump there. And let's take a look in there. Make sure we're not gonna flood. I can hear a little bit of accelerator pump, but doesn't sound like much. So hopefully that's those bowls are filling up and we're getting a little uh, gasoline down there. Well, it is time. Let's give it a try and see what happens. It's running, it's running, and one of the spark, one of the spark plug wires just jumped off of there. So it was running on seven, and was doing a pretty good job. So let's get that plug back in and try it again. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave that choke down this time and see if it makes any bit of a difference. But let's give it a try again. Oh, that made a difference. There she goes, that's what I'm talking about. Keep going. Well, there she goes, she's running now. It's a little clangy. Got some lifter chatter, but that should go away when that pumps up. Man, it, uh, it fired up there pretty good that time. Bit of smoke. Oh, it's starting to quiet down now. Let's 
Nice. Well, it is smoking like crazy. It has been a long, long time since this has been running. You gotta have to keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't catch fire. I don't think I've had one smoke quite this bad upon startup. You know, not coming through the exhaust. Just keep an eye on everything. Make sure nothing bad happens. This is our fuel line. Obviously, we don't have any fuel in the tank or the, the uh, pump's not working. I'm gonna give that just a few minutes to run. It's starting to clear up a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Let me check underneath. I'll make sure we don't have any fires going. Yep, it's just header smoke. It's got those big long tube headers on it and they are smoking pretty good. Yeah, she's running though. She's running. It's crazy how much debris and stuff is on those headers in that exhaust system. Let's take a listen out back. Where's that exhaust come out at? Looks like it's got a single exhaust. Doesn't sound too bad. Kind of a small exhaust pipe for such a big engine though. Yeah, she's still smoking. Wow, I cannot believe all that smoke. 20 years of dirt and debris just burning off. Showing no signs of clearing up, but I guess now's a good time to test the transmission. So, oh, we got manual windows, so that's a good thing. <coughs> oh, it's so smoky. Okay, here we go. Drive. Bam, instantly in the drive. Neutral. Reverse, bam, instantly in the reverse. So, oh man, we got transmission. We got a little bit of brake. Not much brake, just a little bit. Nice. Rev it up a little bit. Let it idle down, there she goes. Oh, she's idling down now. And she's smoky. So smoky, I'm starting to get a little bit worried. Oh, there she goes. She's on fire. She is on fire. And I'm panicking. Shut her down, shut her down, shut her down. Oh, water, we need water. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yep. Woo. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. She did catch fire on, it was just on the exhaust pipes. Oh, man. Sorry I couldn't show you the fire, but I really wanted to get it out first. Man, I just, I knew that was coming. But it was right down there on the exhaust header. So there's probably a bunch of junk caught in the, caught in the exhaust headers. Oh man, that was a, uh, okay, yeah, you can see. I wonder if you can see, I can see a little bit of uh, glowing red, like there's some, Nut shells, maybe. Way down there. I'm gonna have to put that out before it starts up. Yeah, there is some junk down there. We're gonna have to jack this up, man. That was almost got real nasty real quick. Oh, there was there was some good flames there. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna take a minute, catch my breath, calm down a little bit. 
And then we'll jack it up and see what kind of debris is down there that is catching fire. Okay, I gave it a few minutes to uh, cool down a little bit. Laid down this tarp. Let's look under here. The fire was coming from this header right here. So I'm gonna imagine that there's probably some junk in here and yeah, you can already see stuff coming out. Let's try to catch some of that debris. Yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of, quite a bit of debris. A lot of it's already burnt, but leaves, grass, nutshells, all inside of this, uh, all inside this header right here. Fortunately, there wasn't a bunch of oil on the block or uh, we definitely, definitely would have been into some trouble. So I'm gonna try to blow that out a little bit. Get all that the rest of that junk out of there so we don't have a repeat. We need to start this up again and let it run for a little while longer. And check the other side and there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of junk. There's actually grease and stuff still on this header tube. So yeah, gotta clean these guys up so we don't catch fire again because I only have so much water up here. So I have cleaned up the headers as best I can. It's probably still gonna smoke. So to be on the safe side, we're gonna let this run for about five minutes at a time and clear off that gunk because I uh, definitely don't want a fire repeat. While we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and move it up here by the barn, get out the shop vac, clean up the interior, turning it off, turning it on at the same time so we can multitask, do two things at once. So let's get this up at the barn, get the cleaning, get the burning, the gunk off of the headers. I'm actually surprised that the carburetor is uh, working so well after sitting for so long. I mean, it's a Holly, which is good, but it's a really old Holly, which I guess uh, they don't make them like they used to, right? <laughs> There we go. Now, starts right back up. Sounds good. Let's get it moved up here and get the cleaning. Okay, this is going to be the first move, the first real move, I guess, in 20 years. Hopefully, we retain our brakes. That transmission goes into gear hard. Uh, yeah, we still have some brakes enough so far so good you seem to have power steering well that's a plus i'm sure those belts are not good can you see all the junk that's in the bed of this truck uh i've cleaned out about three full bags large large trash bags so far and got a whole lot more left to go it is actually surprisingly quiet for, you know, 440 truck, which I thought it'd have the uh, exhaust all rusted off of it, but it sounds pretty good. I mean, there's a slight, slight stutter. Look at all this junk I have to clean out of the bed. I was hoping for hidden treasures, but uh, yeah, not so much, just uh, squirrels and mice that have been living in here for years on end, eating you know, walnuts. So oh, that's, that's nice. Now, the inside, move our distributor box out of the way. The inside's not so bad. I mean, it's got this, uh, got this cover on it. The dashboard is in fairly good shape, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up real quick. So let's, uh, let's do a real quick clean up on that. One, two, three and done so way better the dashboard dashboard is in really really good shape so uh we just have a mat on the floor underneath that mat mm, not so not so great the seat we have the cover on it so that's fine 
door panel's good shape. Everything, everything's in pretty good shape on this truck. I'm actually impressed on uh, how well this whole interior turned out. So I was starting the truck up and letting it uh, heat up and come up to temperature. Did that a few times and it seemed to have stopped smoking. So I don't think we're gonna catch on fire anymore. Thank goodness. The carburetor, carburetor's not doing great. I don't think there's much accelerator pump. I had to prime it once. So we definitely, definitely need to take, uh, take that carburetor apart. You can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, there's a little gas coming out at the accelerator pump. So definitely need a new one of those or maybe put a different carb on it. One of those things. I really want to take it down the street, but I am really concerned about that back tire. It is so dry rotted, and I'm sure all of them are, that I don't want to blow out one, two, or three, or all the tires just going down the road and back, but I think we'll take it out just right down the road and come right back just to test out the transmission, make sure everything's good there. We'll have to get a set of tires for it eventually, but let's take this down the road real quick so we can finish up the, uh, the revival and say we drove it on the street after 20, 21, 22 years, and it's, uh, it's back. All right, I got it started back up again and I did have to prime it again, but we are ready for our victory lap. Normally a victory lap is uh, around the block, which is about three miles but this time I do not want to go that far. Like I said, on these tires, man, they are bad. But pulling out on the road for the first time in a long time. Here we go. Big 440, first gear, second gear. Come on, let's have a third gear. Come on, third gear. There it is, third gear. Man, we have engine, we have transmission. Nice. And um, this is riding pretty good. I almost want to go further, but not a good idea. Not a good idea. But it is, it's running excellent. Plus, I haven't, I haven't even bothered to test the brakes. I just started off down the street. So we don't even know how much brake we have, so. Let's give it a try. Oh. Brakes aren't great. Brakes are not great. But they're stopping. There's so much rust. I can hear it just grinding away on the rust. And I don't have any mirrors, anything behind me. Anything behind, whoa, whoops. Anything behind me? Nope, nothing behind me. So I think that's far enough. Let's throw it in reverse, which, you know, we have a good reverse. Man, the steering is good, too. The steering's good. All right. Let's get back to the shop. Give it a little more beans. One, two. Uh-huh, three. There we go. It's definitely... Uh, advanced the timing's advanced too much i can hear just a little bit uh spark knock so we're gonna have to hit it with the timing light but that is the least of our worries <laughs> you know this is actually riding pretty good i'm up to well it says 50 miles an hour i don't think i'm going 50 maybe 40 but i'm gonna slow down a little bit because of the tires and the brakes but i think the brakes are coming back around they're starting to feel a lot better now and I'm getting a lot more pedal. Hey buddy, how's it going? <laughs> so, yeah, I think we could have made it all the way around the block. Well, at least with the engine and transmission, I'm really confident because it sounds good. I mean, it sounds real good. Tires, we're gonna have to scrounge up a set of tires for this thing. 
Oops, I lost my microphone there for a minute. What I was saying, scrounge up a set of tires for this thing. And uh, yeah, get it back out there and go for a good test drive. So I just got it in the yard here and we got it parked. Ran just, just fine. Got it parked back up here in the uh, old truck row. But overall, I think it did pretty good. 440 big block truck up and going after over 20 years, running good. The next thing we're gonna do, next episode maybe, next episode after that, I don't know when, but we need some shine juice on this. Or maybe we'll try the uh, Sweet Patina shine juice, or maybe we'll compare those two. Maybe we should compare Sweet Patina and Vice Grip Garage shine juice. That would be that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? And I think this is the truck to do it on. It's got some pretty good patina going on, and I think it's gonna shine up real nice. So that's gonna do it for this episode of Street Rat Garage. Until next time.